Hi there. Today I'm going to be diving deeper into the net metering program because the California Public Utilities Commission, the CPUC, just passed net metering 3.0 in December. So I want to share with you what that means and the impact it will have on homeowners and the solar industry. Hi, I'm Tara Sean. I'm a wife and mother to a toddler girl. And prior to my solar career, I owned an online health and wellness business where I helped people learn how to live healthier. I tested and shared products that I use personally and that aligned with my values of being non-toxic and healthy, not only for the body, but for the environment. I've always been an eco-conscious person, and so my transition into the solar business felt natural because it really aligned with my values of serving and helping people as well as Mother Earth. Now, what is net metering anyway? Well, net energy metering, or NEM, or NEM as we call it, has become the standard policy in the United States for compensating solar customers for the energy they contribute to the grid. And it's the main reason for the dramatic growth of solar energy, particularly in California, where we don't create enough um, of our own power. So both the federal and state governments are incentivizing homeowners to generate electricity locally, so we don't have to buy it from out of state and have it imported over to us, which is why our state electricity rates continue to skyrocket. Now I'm going to share this very quick video that explains exactly how net metering works. How does net metering work? If you're thinking about going solar, you might be wondering how you're supposed to keep your home powered when the sun isn't shining. Thanks to a policy called net metering, you don't have to worry about your home going dark. When the sun is shining during the day, your solar panels will make lots of electricity. If you're making more than you need, your electric meter will run backwards because you're actually sending that excess energy back to the grid. In exchange, your utility gives you credits on your electric bill for all the power you sent them. Then, at night, when your panels aren't producing electricity, you can use the credits you've stored up to get electricity from your utility and power your home. If your panels haven't produced enough energy to meet your needs, don't worry, you can always buy the extra from your utility. Don't expect to get a check in the mail if you produce more solar power than you need. In most cases, you'll get credits on your bill, but your utility won't pay you for them. The specifics of net metering depend on your utility company, and we recommend you call them for further details. Now, between five and 10 years ago, the utility companies came out and switched out the electricity meter on most homes from the old analog meter that you see here to the new smart meter. Now, they did this to get rid of the meter readers that walked around and wrote down your usage. Um, now it's all digital when the trucks drive by. But they were also giving homeowners the ability to go solar, since these new smart meters can not only track consumption of energy, but also production of energy. Now, just to reiterate, net metering is really just an electricity billing mechanism that allows consumers to generate some or all of their own electricity and to use that electricity anytime instead of just when it's generated. Now, I wanna dive deeper into the current net metering program and why the homes that qualify to be able to go solar will benefit most by moving forward before April 13th and getting grandfathered into net metering 2.0 for the next 20 years rather than net metering 3.0. I'm gonna start with net metering 1.0 just so that you can see the progression of these programs and why early adoption is ideal. Now in net metering 1.0, which ended in 2017, it only cost $1 per month to connect to the grid. There weren't any one-time connection fees. Um, there also weren't any non-bypassable charges. And here's the kicker. The utility companies actually send a check to the homeowners for the excess power they generated at a rate of 25 cents per kilowatt hour. Now in net metering 2.0, which is what we're currently in until April 13th, has a 10 to $12 per month grid connection fee. There is a 75 to $145 one-time connection fee. There are non-bypassable charges at a rate of two cents per kilowatt hour of electricity that's used from the grid. Now non-bypassable charges or NBCs are the charges on everyone's utility bill that supports public programs. 
Luckily, going solar reduces or eliminates the amount of power you purchase from the utility. So the main thing I really want to point out here is that in net metering 2.0, the utility companies are buying back the excess power at a rate of 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Now this is going into the homeowner's net metering bank as a bill credit, which is then used to cover the electricity that's pulled from the grid at night, as well as during the months when there's not as much sun. Now in net metering 3.0, the monthly grid connection fee it increases a little bit. Although it's not a lot, it does add up over the years. Also the non-bypassable charges cost, um, they increased a little bit. The interconnection fees remain the same. The main thing I wanna point out here is that the rate at which the utility company buys back the excess energy produced drops 75% and averages to only eight cents per kilowatt hour. Now, what does this all mean? Well, in a nutshell, the reduced net metering credits will have a significant impact on solar savings. Under NEM 2.0, most homeowners in California have a solar payback period of roughly five to six years. Under NEM 3.0, that number will shift closer to nine to 10 years. And over the lifetime of the solar energy system, people will lose out on about 60% of savings under NEM 3.0. Now, that is unless you buy a battery and add that to your solar installation, which is ultimately what California wants homeowners to do. Currently, batteries for storage cost about $12,500 each, and you need two or three batteries to back up an entire home. Now, this is going to increase the cost of going solar by either one, oversizing a system to make sure that despite the 75% reduced buyback rate, your energy production will still cover your usage, or you'll have to buy batteries to not rely on purchasing electricity from the grid. Now, the good news. Homeowners who submit interconnection applications before um, April 13th will get grandfathered into net metering 2.0 for the next 20 years. Now, I did want to share a couple examples of clients that I've worked with who have um, gotten into net metering 2.0. Um, this particular couple, they have two young children. Um, they are getting a, a air conditioning HVAC system installed this year and also plan to get a future electric vehicle. So even despite oversizing the system to compensate for these additional plans, um, this customer was still able to save 35% on their electricity bill in month one. So instead of paying the utility company, they are now paying their solar bill um, and it's less than what they were paying before. So they're saving money right away. And over the next 25 years, they will be saving over $153,000. So that is adding to their net worth. It's an asset to their home and they're no longer renting power because they own their own power. And this client, super excited to go solar, ready to save some money, zero dollars down. We ended up going to the site survey and she needed a new roof. There was dry rot, it was completely um, done, ready to go. And so we were able to help her get not only a new roof, but also her solar still with zero dollars out of pocket and uh, and savings now if you're interested in looking at your solar options the process is very simple step one is just to set up a quick solar review with a solar professional like myself who can a you find out if your home even qualifies to go solar um, if it does two we'll share what the solar options you have are um, step two, we will sign that net metering interconnection application to get you grandfathered into NEM 2.0 and also then set up a site survey so that we can take a closer look at the integrity of your roof and your electrical system. Step three, our engineers create a CAD design of exactly where our panels will go um, and then we will submit the necessary permits to your city for approval. Step four, once permits are approved, we will schedule a date for installation. Installation typically takes one to two days. And step five, um, we'll get your solar system inspected by the city and the utility company. And once it passes final inspection, um, you're given permission to operate and start generating your own power. Now, if you're interested in seeing if your home qualifies and what your best options are for the best price, I would love to help you. 
um, feel free to contact me and set up a solar review so we can get you grandfathered into net metering 2.0 while we still can. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and give me a comment below. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I hope you have a beautiful day.